Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Jet Set Insider. My name is Robert Victor. Actually, you know what? Hold on. My <laughs> name is not Robert. It's no longer Robert. My name is Rob's Gay. And this lady next to me... Hi, I'm the cow. Is Kim's a cow. Have you noticed the title of our show? Rob's Gay and Kim's a cow? <clears throat> Listen, let's just get this right off the bat. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being gay. And there's nothing wrong with being a cow. But I don't know that I'm gay. You don't know Kim, if you're gay? Well, I know I'm not gay. <laughs> and, and Kim's not a cow. So let, let us explain. Sometimes when you put yourself out there in the world of the media, people tend to be a little attacky. So we got an interesting email. We, we got a little hate mail. So mm. when you guys, or when you guys, when you put yourself out there, sometimes you have haters and sometimes you have these creepy little guys that sit behind the keyboard in the comfort of their you know race car bed and they think that they can just you know type whatever they want and send it out so doing this for as many years as we have you've developed we've developed some thick skin mm -hmm. so we don't really give a shit what you have to say uh, I used in, to, in your hate mail. It used to bother me. It used me. to bother him I used a to, lot. We used to come after him. Yeah. Well, no. It, you didn't. Well, we always well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't come like, after I didn't him. Go, what, like you have machine no, guns? No, I didn't like go kick their ass, but <laughs> I definitely I definitely responded by email if I knew who they were. Yeah. Um, well, but that's the point is you never know who they are because they never actually leave a name. So here's the most recent hate mail we got. It says, and I'm going to put this up for you. <laughs> It says, the, his name is yeah, right. His email is uh, fuck you at fuckoff.com. And the comment is, you two are... Uh, you, you two look Thank like you. the biggest schmucks around. Get over yourselves. Rob is as gay. And by the way, why did, does, he, why did does, he highlight gay? I think he highlighted gay. Rob is as gay as they get. Thank you. And Kim is a cow. Moo. Yeah. So, so, so anyway. Now, what's, what's, really, what's really funny, what's really funny about the Kim is a cow part is we have a little product called, called Jet Set Body. Jet Set Body, which is filled with pictures of Kim in, guess what? A bikini. We get these from time to time. It's actually We been... just wanted to share because we keep sharing how like you guys are writing all these wonderful comments about us. And so every once in a while we get some hate mail. Mm -hmm. And this one was, was so, but he, really but funny because... Here's actually the question that I have about this. And we were discussing this the other day in the car. What is it... And I'm, I'm going to go out there and say that... Where are you going? I'm going on a limb. Don't. It's okay. No, it's dangerous. No, I feel safe. No, 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 no. You're not really that stable, it's agile. True. It's true. You're a little old. It's true. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put myself out there and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that... 99% chance, maybe I'm going to go as far as to say 100% chance that somebody who's listening to this podcast right now has never <clears throat> opened up a fuck you at fuck off dot fuck you email accounts and said you're gay and you're fat to anybody uh, in any way, shape or form. So That's because <clears throat> we have wonderful listeners. Correct. So, so for the people who, who actually... Why do you think that someone would actually do that? What are they looking for? Are they looking for the time that I'm giving it right now for me to talk about them? Or what's the what's the end result? I don't think there is one. I honestly, I feel, I actually, you know, at first when you get those, you're like, you know, go screw off, whatever. Like, you don't really care. It's whatever. And it's not an awesome email to open on like Monday morning, but... I think that's part of it uh, for them, but I think the other part of it is um, their life. Like it's the other part is that I feel really sad for them that yeah. the type of life that they might might be living or have to have to be able to spend their time. Like I don't have the time in my day to write fuck you emails. Right. So like I just I feel I feel really sad for you. Fuck you at fuckoff.com. Let's tell them what we yeah. have going on in the show All right. today. So <clears throat> today we are in the holiday spirit because it is the holiday season. In our first segment, we're going to share our opinions of the Thanksgiving fight heard around the world. 
Then, in our second segment, we're going to take you to a 100-year-old hotel that has seen decades of presidents and has a spooky lifetime guest. Just won't check out. And in our third segment, I'm going to give you five kick-ass gifts, uh, gift ideas for the Jet Set Traveler. And last, it's time for a change in it's our videos. It's time for a change. And our videos are going to be a change in, and we'll tell you how. So, f- all right. So let's first let's, off, let's get into this. Um, you know, let's get into this debate now because I have some strong opinions on this. On what? On it's now safe to turn on yes. electronic devices. Okay, so we travel a lot. We was that a slurp? <laughs> it's the noise cows make when they drink. By the way, that is... <laughs> it's going to be my joke. That was funny. This is the best part. You want to know the best part of coffee? Here it is, right here. Coffee cat. That was what Jerry Seinfeld that said. That was a coffee cat. Yeah, Jerry Seinfeld said that on his show, but it's true. It is the absolute best part of coffee. Um, and if you haven't watched his show, Comedians in Cars Having Coffee is fantastic. Is it a, pos- a podcast? No, it's weird. He didn't do a podcast. He did an internet show, which is a pain in the ass because you got to like stream it if you're in the what car. What do you stream it on? His website. His website. He's got like, I think there's, it's probably YouTube. He's probably got a YouTube embed okay. thing in there. Okay, so anyway, so, it is now safe to turn on your electronic devices. All right. So there's, Go. there's, there's two parts. So part, part number one is that I'm a guy that absolutely loves to travel. Part number two is I love electronic devices. So putting the two of those together on the flight for me is just finally somebody went, yeah, this is this is you, not doing your anything. Your iPad is not going to crash yeah, the plane. Nobody's crashing. We're all good and you can watch it. Okay. So that's that's the good news. What I perceive to be the bad news is part two of where this is going because it's already up for debate which is, can you use your cell phones on the plane? Now, I listen, I'm on my cell phone as much as everybody else is these days. The problem is I can't sit next to somebody who's on the phone. A, if I'm not on the phone, I don't want to hear their conversation. B, the double talk. I can't sit there on a plane going... Kim, what did you say? Hello? And the other person's going, now what did you say? say? Now where are we going? Now multiply that out by the third person in the row next to you. And of course, exponentially multiply it out by the entire airplane having the ability to do that. Or worse, like, have you ever listened to a conversation between two teenage girls? Like, do you want to be stuck next to the teenage girl that's going, and so then he said, and then so, and then I said, and then so, and then he said, and then so, and then I said, for four and a half hours. And there's no way, if you're a seatmate, there's no way... A seatmate. A seatmate. There's no way you're that in you can this sit together. there in a quiet environment and having the person next to you having a conversation about whatever, good conversation, bad conversation, or whatever, and then they say bye, and... There's no way that you could not be involved in that conversation because they're one inch from your mouth. The Larry David episode on Curb Your Enthusiasm where he was was so upset that the person... No, I'm sorry. He was sitting there at a table in a restaurant on his cell phone. And his argument was, I'm sitting at the table by myself having a conversation on my cell phone, but the person next to him said, can you shut your cell phone off, please? And he's like, why? I'm just having a conversation. You're sitting there with the person that you're with and you're talking. I'm sitting on the telephone and I'm having a conversation. But there's something different when the other person is about there. a one-person <laughs> conversation. You don't get to hear the other side. You don't get to hear the other side. <laughs> and I I agree with Larry. So Well, next- I disagree with Larry that... Yeah. It's you should not be in a restaurant on the cell phone, and I also don't agree that you should be on a plane having the same cell phone conversation or having the right to have it. So you so, think so you think you should be able able to use your iPad, your iPhone, or whatever from taxi to takeoff, but you don't think that talking should be allowed. Yes, and I wonder what you guys think. Should you be able to use your iPad? Yes or no? And should you be able to talk on the phone? Yes or no? On a flight. 
All right, so moving along, let's move on to our first segment. Our first segment, which, which is, is we're really chatty today, and yeah. we're like ten minutes in and still on haven't even gotten to the first segment, but that's okay. Ready? Well, you let it all let out. Sometimes you talk too much, and we <laughs> and we have to edit it. All right, so moving on to the next segment, which is Elon, the Bachelor Pad producer, and his Twitter. What do we call it? Debacle. His Twitter feed. Of a supposed fight that he had on an airplane heading to Thanksgiving. Um, if for those of you that did not catch this uh, either in the news or live on his Twitter, he basically laid out a four and a half hour fight with a woman sitting in 7A named Diane. And he it started with her being rude to the flight attendants on the flight, saying, you know, don't you realize that I have a Thanksgiving to get to because their flight was delayed? And he uh, sent her a glass of wine and said, I hope that, you know. You- he basic- Basically, he went back and forth with this fight with this lady. But if you listen, it all ends- we'll, it we'll, all- link, we'll link to it so you can yeah. read it. It's a very long back and forth. It all ends with his thing. mother giving the middle finger to in the, the lady. car. So when you, when you read, and it was, in it, Huff- was so it was in Huffington Post. So when you read it the next day, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. Because he everybody, is, everybody has had one of those passengers on <laughs> the flight. That you wish you did that to. Yeah. All right? So you'll, you'll understand. So We're then, not going to go into that. But- so then he comes back a couple days later and says, I'm going to take, I took a picture of Diane and I'm going to post it. And everybody's going, oh my God, oh my God, he did. Because she ended up, in, in the fight, she ended up smacking him. Uh, when they got off the flight and they asked if he wanted to call security and she ended up missing her next flight and it was a whole thing. And so you just want to keep it going. Well, he posted a picture of an empty rocking chair and so admitted that his the guy, entire thing was fake and it was just for fun. The guy fabricated, so, he fabricated the entire so thing. So he got tons of press and he got tons of followers and the Huff Post wrote an article and everything about this fight on Twitter and it was fake. So do you feel like this is like James Fry where he wrote the fake memoir or do you feel like it was just a fun, playful spoof? What's your opinion? So, so okay, here's my opinion because I'm, today I'm very opinionated. So here's what, I, here's what I'm going to tell you. Shocker. I'm going to tell you that if you're, it's... You're also gay. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If, if April 1st was the day this happens, no problem. No problem. I get it. It's April Fool's Day. We're having a good laugh. You got me. Everybody does it, right? Google does it on April Fool. Everybody's got their thing that they do. Oh my God. This was like Thanksgiving. There's no Thanksgiving foolery. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So the guy completely bullshit. So my opinion is that he never meant to come out and tell the truth. He didn't know that this was going to get picked up and get get as no, big as it got. Uh, no, you're wrong. He knew it was going to get exactly as big as it got, and he came out and told the truth himself. Why do you think he told the truth? Because it was a joke. Mm. I, I feel like you didn't buy anything. It's not like you bought a book and you were reading this memoir under the impression that it was real. It's Twitter. Maybe. It's Twitter. And were you entertained? Yeah. But, but, I, but I'm no longer entertained. Now I'm mad. Why, what are you mad at? Because he lied to me. He's you're, a liar. You're so, what are you turning into like a creepy old man with, he <laughs> lied to you. He lied to me. He lied to you and the other 150,000 Twitter so followers. So you read, you read the Twitter thing. Yeah, you I'll tell, put it in the show notes. You tell us what you think. So <clears throat> we took a little bit of a different trip this year. For Thanksgiving. We decided, we normally go to, you know, exotic locales. But well, we've been, in the past years, we've been competing around this time. And so we were on the West Coast competing in fitness competitions. So we were on the West Coast and we typically would go out to Del Mar or um, Palm Springs or San Diego or something like that. Yeah. Um, but this year we weren't competing and we're in Atlanta. So we changed so. it. We changed it around a little bit. We stayed. Uh, we stayed local, and we decided because we live in the South and we've never been anywhere in the South. We decided to um, drive to Asheville. Drive to Asheville, and we checked. And that's out in this, North Carolina, Asheville, North Carolina. Yeah, we checked out this really cool place uh, called the uh, Grove Park Inn. It's a beautiful hotel. It's uh, celebrating its hundred years this year, and it turns out that I think they've had like eight generations of presidents stay at this particular hotel and um 
it's really unique. Asheville itself, just a quick moment on Asheville, it's not like being in the South, right? It's super modern. I, I would describe progressive. Not I would modern. describe it as like a little hippie enclave. Yeah, it's so cool in there and um, dog friendly. Which for oh yeah, for I forgot that, that little one that, behind this. That thing curled up in the ball right there. Hey Gia. Gia, say hello. Say hello. Hello. Yep, yeah, it there moved. You go. There, there, you go. there you go. So we brought Gia with us and, of course, our daughter, Demi. And we headed to Asheville four hours-ish in traffic from Atlanta and uh, in the Blue Ridge Mountains. And uh, you loved – what was your favorite part? Of, um, of, of the, the whole trip? Park, of oh, the of the gro- park. Well, what's, what was incredible about the, the Grove Park for me was how dog-friendly it was. It was like if you're sitting in the lobby, you'll have at any given moment 10 giant-sized dogs – just sitting there in front of the, in front of these huge two Stone. fireplaces that they have. And you know what's funny about those fireplaces? Hmm. What's in the back of the fireplace? An elevator. An elevator to go upstairs. Yeah, I swear to God, it's the weirdest. That must be terrible for claustrophobia. Oh. We're gonna put you inside a fireplace in an elevator. Oh my God. From a hundred years ago. Oh my God, horrible. But so, yeah, it's a really really cool spot, and I I definitely dog recommend dog friendly hotel. Um, but what you love the most, I didn't realize that you love the dog friendliness the most, but. You had to be back at the hotel every day oh, by 4.45. Oh, How did I forget that? Yeah, the sunset was incredible. Let's show them a picture real quick. Okay. I mean, look at that. Like, that's beautiful. I mean, the hotel, the sunset deck in the back, the sunset terrace. Like, I can oh ca- in God. Atlanta, I can count on one hand the amount of times I've seen a sunset. I mean, this is pretty spectacular. You have the mountains. You have Asheville. You can sit there with your puppy you can Ser- have service is great yep. um food's great the, there was some really really cool restaurants Ooh, the bookstore there was a bookstore where you can go in with your dog sit in these big comfy couches and chairs have like a cheese plate a glass of wine some coffee and read work on your computer whatever with your dog yeah How really cool really cool so you know this will this will kind of lead us into our next segment here there's a, there's a couple of um there's a couple oh, yeah. of kick-ass gifts we're going to talk about, and yeah. one of them we actually used at the Grove Park Inn. Keeping in the holiday theme, yeah. You know, so people we're are get... always struggling to find which gift you uh, need to get that special someone that maybe has everything, loves to travel, unique gifts, and so here's five of our favorites. So we'll give you the first one. The first one I've heard about because I've had a lot of friends who have them, but honestly, I never really saw the need because. Well, it's called the uh, the GoPro, which I'm sure you're very familiar with. And there was a big special last week um, on 60 Minutes with the owner, and I was really um, taken by what this thing could do. And I've gone basically GoPro crazy. So for those of you that are watching on video, um, you can see this is uh, this is the camera, and the camera basically um, is not attached to a pole, but this is the camera, and the camera comes in uh, this plastic case. It has two cases. two cases. One case has a uh, area in the back that's open to allow sound to come in. Um, and the other case, uh, you change this door and it does not have this open area. And it basically seals it so that you can get it wet or jump out of an airplane so or do you whatever can, you want. You can connect this to your <clears throat> surfboard. You can put it on a boat. And there's different attachments, like this pole is one of them, that you can actually so you can, hold. Yeah, what's cool that can about hold this thing the camera. is you can, like, for our, we're going to try it. We're going to Rome uh, in a couple of weeks, and we're going to give We're going to use it there. We're going to give it a shot but there. But yeah, so you can take this camera just to give you applications for it, and you can stick it on your, like if you're using it, the wet case, you can put it on the edge of the boat. And <clears> what's <throat> unique is it has different... Um, ways to take the image right because we're using the fisheye right now yeah you can use a uh it's actually not called fisheye but oh. it does give you it, it, it looks like it does give eye. you a fisheye look it's just called the wide angle uh setting on it which i i like better because what I are think the it's other settings there's just um it really it's kind of simple it, it's just a video camera with wide and normal oh okay um and they're all 1080p for those people that are into those numbers um and uh, pictures are so clear. They're really, really clear. You can also take photos with it. It's actually to geek out a little bit on this. It, it goes to sixty frames per second, and that's really, really fast for those that know HD numbers. 
and I shot some video on uh, 1080p and 60 frames a second, and I put it in my computer. The processor for my new MacBook couldn't even handle it. It was sputtering. So I called up their tech support, which is really an interesting thing in itself because you get surfer dudes that answer the phones like, Ew, what's up? Um, and I asked them, why, you know, why was it sputtering? And they said, because your processor is just not fast enough to handle that level of video. And they even, they even have another camera if you want to go to the next level that's their black version. This is the GoPro Silver. This is the GoPro, GoPro Silver. Uh, they have a black version that's higher than 1080p and I think even higher than 60 frames per second, which is would, unnecessary. Which for is our unnecessary use. because you, it, you, you, there's nothing that's going to be able. I don't even think iMovie would take it, to be honest with you. So this guy came up with a hell of an idea. Yeah. But the, the thing with this is one, it's small, and two, you can attach it to like your dog's head if you yeah. want. All right, the so second I, the, one. the second one is something that um, I've stayed away from um, because the, its initial incarnation was too big, too bulky, and too many problems, but I, I think they've fixed it now, and it, it works really well. It is well. the Mophie. Oh, look, oh. there's two of you. Oh, thank God. I love seeing myself. He's so silly. So the Mophie, in case you don't know what it is, is a very big, I still think it's big, uh, case for your phone. I don't, I have one, but I don't use it as my everyday. I only use it when I think that I might be somewhere like a festival or a concert where I'm going to run out of battery. The bottom is an extra battery. And so you can. Yeah, you can charge it. Charge so you, it. you basically plug it in. And to give you an idea, like you'll see here, it lights up. Oh, it's, mm. oh, I guess it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, you charge it. You charge it at night. You charge the actual not, case. Might not be lighting because it's not connected. But you um, you light it. You uh, you charge it at night, and it it truly will give you double the battery. So your battery runs out to twenty percent. You click on the little button in the back for the Mophie. It recharges your phone basically to 100%, so you get twice the life. It's awesome when you're yeah, out all day. So yeah. you'll have you'll have these little lights that light up. Tells that you how much battery. Tell you yeah. how much battery. Um, I, I would say I'm a little cautious with this because, I mean, I'm a little, like I don't really need it on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, there are times maybe once or twice in a week where um, I drain the battery. But I'll tell you, I've also gotten to the habit with the iPhone of plugging it in everywhere. Yeah. So I'm constantly plugging it in. Yeah. It's really for the person that can't plug it in. You know, they're not it's in their car. It's awesome when we're traveling. It's when we're great. traveling, it's going to be great. Yeah. So the Mophie, how much is the Mophie? 100 bucks. 100 bucks. So if you find that your phone is drained or like when we were at the... Um, Tomorrow World Festival and everybody's phones were dying. The, the Mophie, biggest, the Mophie the would have been amazing. The biggest tent that they had going on there, there was somebody selling um, for $15 these plugins that you plug into your iPhone and it does like an instant charge and it was $15. There was a line around the block. It yeah. took 20 minutes, maybe a half hour to get to the person to give them $15 to yeah. buy it. And it only charged your phone like 10 more percent. It, it kind, did not. It was kind of shitty. It was kind of so shitty. So this, if you find yourself in those situations or if you have somebody who is a tech geek like that. There is one downside though, we have to say. Yes. If you drop this. You're fucked. The, it's so heavy, your entire screen will shatter. Yeah. I've dropped my phone 400 times in a regular, in a regular case. I've dropped it and it never shatters. I dropped it one time in the Mophie case, the whole screen it's shattered. A, it's definitely, it's an off-center thing. Yeah. So so I would say like it has its limitations. If you are a known dropper. Don't don't get one. Do not get yeah. this. But, if no. you don't drop, you'll probably be fine. I'm not a dropper. All My right. wife, dropper. dropper. So the next gift is called earplanes. Now there are these little... Um, ear plugs that go in the ear so they're not all over the ear they're in the ear and they drop the noise level level by 20 decibels and they also help with reducing popping in the ears so if you have little kids that fly and their ears hurt when they pop you can put these in So, so for the traveler, they're it's a pretty really cool inexpensive, thing. Um, and again, we'll put it in the show notes. So now we got this other thing <clears throat> called a buddy tag. Tell her about. Tell them. Uh, yeah. Um, why was it a her? I have no idea. <laughs> tell them about a. Because uh, you like women. Yeah. I, I, well, that's not what uh, fuck you with fuck you uh, dot com says. Tell me about uh, the buddy tag. The buddy tag. Yeah. Okay, this one's for parents, and it's 
traveling parents. This is really, really neat. I may even put one on you one day. It is a little bracelet. It's a colored bracelet that is kind of nondescript for the kid. It could look like a yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I know what like a swatch yeah, I have no or idea. something yeah. like that. So it's not doesn't look like they're being tracked. Yeah. But it has a tracking chip, a GPS tracking chip in it. In the in the tag? In the bracelet. And <laughs> you put it on your kid's wrist. So let's say you're in the airport and you're with your kid, however old, you know, I, I wouldn't I mean, maybe we could put one on Demi. She's 15. That would mm-hmm. be kind of funny. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, wouldn't be a terrible idea. <laughs> so it's got a little GPS on it, and it goes to your iPhone, to an app. So you can, or an, and it does other phones too, you can literally track your kid. It also has a panic button for the kid. So let's say your kid gets lost in the mall or in the airport or something. They can hit the panic button, and it will immediately notify your phone that your kid is freaking out somewhere. Really if you're, cool. It is really cool. So if you're a traveler and you've got kids and you're panicked about them being panicked or losing them in the mall or in the uh, Colosseum in Rome or wherever you're taking them, <laughs> right. this is a perfect Gladiators, little thing. Gladiators, lions come out, eat yeah, them. This is a perfect uh, thing for traveling parents. The last one is called uh, Princegram, which uh, my wife just turned me on to this morning, yeah. which is really, really cool. So, like in the in the world of um, Instagram pictures, which which we're all Instagramming in yeah. one way or another, or if we're not doing it ourselves, we're certainly looking at other Instagrams. Yeah, this company came up with a really good idea because you know Instagram has got these amazing. Square. Filters. They're square. They're square and they have cool And they have filters. beautiful filters. They make everybody look great. Everybody. Right? So this... Except me. I'm a moo cow. Yeah. This, this thing allows you to take your pictures that are on Instagram and print them in a lot of really, really cool ways. And to give you an example of a cool way, one of them that I think is amazing is they have a poster. Like a, imagine like a regular size poster. I was going to say like Farrah Fawcett, that's how old I am. <laughs> Imagine like, you know, like the, these giant posters where you can put up to 500 of your Instagram pictures on. So it, it has these basically thumbnails. So imagine how but cool. But they can be bigger. So if you only put 50, you can have bigger whatever, whatever, ones. Yeah, it's a proportional. So they do photo books. You can just print regular ones. They do stickers. They do so little, for like 25 little bucks, ones, big ones. They it's awesome. So you basically go, I think it's an app, you upload, or I know they also have a website, you upload your stuff and you decide what you want to print. And if you are giving this as a gift, you can buy gift cards in like 20 30 $40, whatever. You can buy somebody a Princegram gift card so they can go on and Instagram, Princegram themselves. Do we have any any more information for these people, or are we, or is that it? Is that is that the show? Have we wrapped no, it up? Have we no, done everything? No. What's next? What's Last, next? It's time for a change. It's t- by the way. Does every single politician? Mm-hmm. And why are we such sheep that Honey. follow? Honey, different show. Oh, different show. Sorry. It's time for a change, I'm running, and I'm running using for our <coughs> using our GoPro Hero Silver. We are now going to start filming some of our video, not all of it, but some of it with the GoPro. Uh, so when we're going to Rome, that's going to be our first real thing. Tell them what we're going to do in Rome. The, the, uh, if you go to GoPro.com, you can look at, uh, click on mounts and you could see the mount options that they have. Everything from a dog mount to put it onto your dog to watch from your dog's point of view. Um, oh, we still to, need to do that. Yeah, to, to a handlebar mount. So we bought the handlebar mount because uh, we're going to rent a scooter in Rome and we we're have... going to go through the streets of Rome with the GoPro attached from that. Like, we could never, there's always this, <laughs> when we're traveling, there's always this, how do we get both of us on both camera? Both of us on camera. Well, one, with this doohickey, we just pull we usually this... We usually need Darren. Whitey. We Whitey usually comes need in. Whitey to help. Well, this thing, I could just put it in front of me and we can just kind of like do this thing. You can right do that. There and film which it. Is, which is a little strange, but. Well, whatever. Yeah, but I think the bigger application for us is being able to clip it onto the things that we need so we don't have to sit a camera on a rock or uh, yeah. any of the other weird places we've have to put a camera so we can both get on the film together. So. Yeah, I mean, there's all, there's all kinds of really cool things. So yeah. we're going to we're gonna try different, what they call in the biz, POVs, point yes. of views. So real quick, uh, we're going to give you some images showing the GoPro right now. 
uh, that we've done. Rob, with his DJ-ness, did a mix lab at Fit Radio headquarters a couple of weeks ago, and we took a little bit of video of that with the GoPro. Um, of course, I had no idea what I was doing with the GoPro. He sort of handed it to me and said, film. Half the time, I thought I was taking video. I was taking pictures, so that was bad. Oh, I, I should also say that yeah. if you get the GoPro, um, the battery will drain very, very fast. If you keep it attached to Wi-Fi. So they sell this other thing called a Wasabi, which is basically... Ooh, I like Wasabi. Mm -hmm. it's, Spicy. It, it's really, it's a great name. It's uh, They give you two batteries that plug into... Um, it's got like a, 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 a plug-in charger... You plug the charger into the socket, and then you put the battery in. And there's two of them that you get. So if you buy that thing, which is not that expensive, if you buy that thing, then you now have three batteries. Yeah. So you can, and the batteries are like that small. You can just stick them in your pocket. The battery does drain, and if you keep it attached to Wi-Fi, we found out. So anyway, here's the video of the, of the Fit Radio Mix Lab using the GoPro. <laughs> I know he's really good, isn't he? Yeah. Oh my God, it's you! Oh, oh, far, wow! Far, Farfig Newton. Farfig By the way, Newton. is this for the Germans watching this show? Is this a word? And is it spelled correctly? And what <laughs> is it? I mean, I, I know it means Volkswagen, <laughs> but what does it mean? Or is it just a totally made up word? And if it's a made up word, damn. Damn. Damn, was that an Damn. amazing idea. All right. And so to give you another taste of what our future Jet Set Life videos are going to look like, here is Gia eating a dog bone. That's great. Oh, my God. Go a little closer to the face. Oh, my God. I love when her face goes into the camera. Yeah. And her all nose. you see is like nostrils yeah <laughs> you know coming yeah. in well and i think I th one more yeah. one more one more yeah one more mm. i want to show them the sunset in nashville oh yeah there you go should we take them out to some music yeah all right so let's do it. before before we do this i got something i need to say to you all right here's what i want to say to you how much did this cost you oh quickly please how much money how much money did you pay for this entertainment right not a nickel would it so they kill shouldn't you? be they shouldn't be upset Would then if it's it fake. Kill you to go on to iTunes, type in Jet Set Insider, and leave a five star review. You know what? People do it every day. Every day, you guys, I love you guys. Nobody talks about cows. Moo. Nobody talks about I think you're gay. Moo. And Our by people, the way, not the why, and by the way, why, why is, is that, that a bad thing? Why is that a bad thing? Right. Why uh, is that a slur? Right. I happen to think Oh, you that know what? You're heterosexual. Okay. I happen to think that the gays are amazing. What, why is that a slur? They took care of South Beach. I'm made just that, saying. They cleaned that place up, made I'm it pretty. I'm just saying. So, so let's not get off point here. You, you basically go to iTunes. You type in Jet Set Insider. You go to comments. You leave a five-star thing and you go, they you know what? They want to see the sunset now. You know what? I like these guys. You're going off into the sunset. I like sunset. these guys. And we're going to leave you with some beautiful music. And a sunset. Moon. <laughs> <laughs>